So Armed police detaining Christensen, a 46-year-old builder, in May 2017 at a prayer meeting some 200 miles south of Moscow. Christensen had pleaded innocent, saying he was exercising freedom of religion gu guaranteed in Russia's constitution. And this is what his wife had to say. The Constitution says one thing, that we have full rights to freely gather and freely practice our religion, but in reality, it's not the case. And the Jehovah's Witness Israel representative, Alex Fredrickson, joins me in studio. Alex, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. So, what do you make of the fact that Russia has classed a Jehovah's Witness as an extremist group? Well, I'm very saddened uh, of this great misrepresentation of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, we are not extremists. Why do you think that they've classed it as such? Well, it really surprises me. I don't really know why. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, around the world were registered in uh, over 180 countries as a registered religion. Uh, we're known for being good citizens, peaceful people. Uh, we want to help the community. So I really, I don't understand why we're being treated this way in Russia. But what do you understand as the perceived threat? Of course, you're saying that you're there to do no harm, but there's obviously a sense of, of threat by, by Russia that they are classing it as an extremist group. What's your understanding of that? Well, again, it's very, uh, it's, it's hard to understand. And even I feel the Russian government doesn't understand why. Um, right now on the Kremlin web website, you can read a quote from Vladimir Putin. He's quoted as saying he doesn't understand why Jehovah's Witnesses are being labeled as extremists. And uh, it just shows there, there's a problem in the law on extremism, extremism there. Uh, the way the law is written, it's written in a very broad way uh, that allows um, really anyone to be labeled as extremists. Now, I understand that this is not new for Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia. In fact, uh, it goes back to the Soviet era. That, that's correct. I, I was going to bring this up too, that this is not new for Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia in the Soviet era uh, because Jehovah's Witnesses are neutral in, in politics. They refused to get involved in the Communist Party. And for that, they were put on boxcars and sent to Siberia to work camps. Mm -hmm. And looking at what happened then, what are your concerns now, seeing that this has been classed as an extremist group and then uh, some of your fellow believers are now being put in jail for it? Well, thinking about that, how they were treated in Soviet times, actually it encourages me more, uh, showing that Jehovah's Witnesses have been able to face that. They're going to be able to face this because one thing has been constant. It's uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, their desire to uh, remain faithful and continue to worship their God peacefully. Mm -hmm. Now, the figures that I have is that there are about 170,000 followers in Russia. What does this mean for Russian Jehovah's Witnesses now with this ban, I suppose, or the fact that the, the religion has been classed as illegal? What will this mean for their ability to practice their faith? It's very difficult. Um, for one thing, all of our properties that were used for meeting together for worship has been seized have been seized. That's tens of millions of dollars in property have been seized by the Russian government. So they're not able to meet in large groups. Uh, they can only meet together in, in small groups. Um, but uh, in addition to that, uh, in addition to Dennis Christensen being uh, imprisoned, uh, there's others that are in house arrest. Uh, there's ones that their travel documents have been taken. Uh, because, and so they're not able to leave the area, all because they're being labeled extremists. Mm -hmm. Additionally, uh, there's been many raids on homes and searches on homes. I think over 260 families have experienced raids on their homes, sometimes in the middle of the night. Imagine this. You're awakened by a bang on the door by masked um, mm -hmm. uh, officers mm -hmm. with guns at midnight. They come into your home, search everything you have, take your electronic devices, your travel documents, uh, and they're there for hours. Mm -hmm. So this is what some are having to face, but again, uh, we're confident that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia, they have a strong desire to continue to worship Jehovah um, faithfully and peacefully. Despite the fact that it might uh, land them in prison, and Dennis Christensen's sentence was six years. So what happens after, after those six years? He's released back into the public, and then what? Well, we're hoping that this is not the end. They're, they've rendered a decision, but we will appeal. So we are hopeful that we can use the legal means to appeal it and that it will be reversed in the appeals court. Um, 
But if not, we have confidence that uh, no matter if you're in a prison cell, you're in a home, or you're in a larger gathering, uh, you can continue to worship, worship God wherever you're at. What does it mean for a Jehovah's Witness when you say you'll continue to, to practice your faith and continue to worship God? What does that mean then? Well, it's the most important thing. Um, God deserves all the praise. Uh, so um, in Soviet times, they continued to meet together to read the Bible and pray. And so they'll continue to do this in, in Russia too. Oh,